So I was finishing up my morning chores yesterday and I noticed a couple of guys in a pickup truck loitering around my property border. How you doing? Morgan, how's it going? Not too bad, what's your name? Chris. Chris Morgan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, I don't uh, want my videos on YouTube and all that bullshit. Yeah, you don't have a choice. I'm trying to catch dogs off so I don't end up on your land. All right, well, yeah, stay stay off this side. Yeah, right now, that's why we're stopped here. I'm going to them off so they don't end up there. Yeah, all right, good. Good, good. How's it going? Doing good? What's that? This is what I'm doing, all right. All right. What are you doing? Yeah, all right. Getting chores done this morning. Saw you guys driving by. Curious to see what's up. I'm going to keep the bear off your property. I'm not worried about the bear. It's the dogs that I'm not a fan of. The dogs, we can stop. What's that? The dogs, we can stop. All right, well, that's good. I want to see that. <laughs> well, no, so, it, and, like, look, I know... I've had some issues here, yeah. but like, you know, for example, that guy, Butch, yeah. what he always told me, oh, I can't control the dogs. If you guys control it, I'm like, you watch right here when I, I would, I will yeah. happily post that. Yeah. Keep down, oh yeah. Yeah. 40 yards coming. Yeah, yeah. Two bags. This is a real nice one. Sure, baby. Big one. Yeah. I like the bears, man. They bring biodiversity. <laughs> They're good eating too. I don't know if you bought burgers at the store lately, but it's pretty expensive. Oh yeah. No, I know. So I just stood there and observed for several minutes as the guys tried and tried to bring their dogs back from the cornfield where they were running around and chasing a bear. You know, folks who have been following our farm for a while know that over the last couple of years, we've had a number of issues with hound hunters on our land. In particular last year, we had one issue where a bunch of raccoon hunters showed up on our farm and were going through our door yard at about 11.30 at night. A shouting match ensued and eventually the state troopers were called. Do you call the cops? Call the cops? Uh, call the uh, St. J Trooper. And I was absolutely stunned to learn that what the raccoon hunters were doing on our land was 100% perfectly legal. It's okay, bud. It's okay, bud. It's okay, bud. Hey, it's okay. It's just me. It's just me. Sounds like it's back there. That's her. I thought it was all right, you know what I mean? No, it's definitely not okay. I got a duck and goose farm. We got free range ducks and geese on the other side of this fence. I'm sorry about that. The guy should have known that. That incident inspired me to get on my high hobby horse and start a petition. A petition to ban hound hunting in the state of Vermont. You know, I feel like hound hunting is cruel and it actually is not sportsmanlike and it completely tramples on my rights as a private property owner. Because the way hound hunting typically works is some guys will put GPS collars on their dogs. They will set their dogs loose and let their dogs range for miles and miles, sometimes being as far as two miles away from their dogs. And meanwhile, they'll be tracking those dogs on their phones or on iPads, following little blue dots like they were on Google Maps. And I don't know about you guys, but I have never ever seen a dog that can read a posted sign. And so these dogs will often run around and go back and forth from being on posted land to unposted land, fully disregarding the private property rights of someone like me who might not want to have that activity happening on their farm. So magically, after I set up that petition, which just so happened to garner more than 100,000 signatures, Butch Spear, who was president of the Vermont Bear Hounding Association at the time, ended up treeing a bear right here on our farm, I don't know, about 1,500 yards from the spot I'm standing in right now over there in the woods. I went with Butch to go get his dogs and ensure that he and his hunting party did not kill the bear. And I just so happened to bring a video camera along and record the whole situation. People have been using hounds since before the Romans. I appreciate that. People had slaves back when they were Romans. Doesn't mean you should be having slavery either, right? Sometimes I wish we did. What, what, what? Sometimes I wish we did. Wait, what? You, wait, wait, what? 
Did you I, just say I'm you old, wish we had slavery? I'm, I'm old enough now so that I wish somebody would do my work for me. I posted that online. The video got a ton of attention and sparked a debate between anti-hound hunters and pro-hound hunters, not just here in the state of Vermont, but across the entire United States. A viral TikTok video is sparking debate over hound hunting in Vermont. The video posted last week has already hit more than 12 million views. Channel 3's Kevin Geist breaks down the debate over hound hunting and property rights. The video, shot by Goldshaw farm owner Morgan Gold, has rekindled a conflict over property rights in Vermont when it comes to dogs in pursuit of their prey. I feel like I'm completely powerless based on the way the laws are to say that I don't want those folks on the property. I worry about the stress that it puts on my animals and the risk that it creates for my animals. When dogs go running across someone's property and they're howling and barking and baying, that it causes a ruckus. Look, other folks can do what they want on their land, but it's a choice that I want to make for my land. There's not a violation in the statute for dogs chasing a bear or chasing a raccoon and going onto somebody's posted property. Problem is, dogs don't know when they're on private property and has now gotten hundreds of thousands of signatures on some petition to ban hound hunting in Vermont because he's so concerned that a dog would come on his land. And that whole experience in and of itself was not without its own drama. Are you a native of No. What, where, where'd you come from? I originally grew up in Hartford. Hartford? Yeah. That tells me something. What the hell don't you go back? You know something? Oi. When a bear comes and visits you, Oi. you're going to really think it sucks. Oi. Go back to Hatfield, where you belong. Then you ain't drinking nothing. But surprisingly, since the drama back in the fall, things on the hound hunting front around our farm have been very, very quiet. That's not to say that they've been quiet around the state of Vermont. In fact, there's been a couple of incidents that have happened that are pretty dang ugly. Late last fall, there was an incident in the town over from us where a couple of hound hunters mixed it up with a couple of older ladies. Dog fights and deflated tires ensued. And then also in that same town next to us, there was an incident this past summer with my buddy Butch Spear and a woman who ended up trying to pepper spray him or bear mace him or something like that. Now I'll talk a little bit more about those situations later in this video. Hey buddy, hey. Yeah, there you go, Jimmy. But what I will say is things have been quiet on our farm until yesterday. Hey Kios, come on Kios, let's go. Come on Kios, hey Kios, hey Kios, fresh grass, come on. Come on Kios, hey Kios, fresh grass, come on. You know, pretty soon, girls, you're gonna be going into the barn. We're starting to get regular frosts here. So yeah, yesterday morning, I found myself standing on the side of the road. On one side of the road, you had my neighbor's cornfield, which is unposted. And then on the other side of the road, you had my land, which I took great care earlier this summer to ensure it was 100% properly posted. And standing in the middle of the road, you had these two hound hunters trying to call back their dogs. And now to be perfectly clear, these two hound hunters I have never met nor have I ever seen before. You know, in the great hound hunting debate, there's been much ado made about the fact that I've come in here from out of state and I'm trying to change the state and all my neighbors hate me, which I've actually found not to be the case. In fact, for example, Butch Spear, who's the guy who often hound hunts in this area, he doesn't even live here. He lives like several towns away. And so yes, there are hound hunting folks in my region, but a lot of my neighbors here in Peach of Vermont, they are not fans of hound hunters in general. And in fact, ever since I went public on my hound hunting issues, many of them have shared their stories with me about how they felt threatened, how they feel like their land is being abused, and how they just generally don't want the hound hunters around. But because you have a lot of forest in this area and you have a lot of cornfields in this area, it's a great habitat for black bear, which then attracts the hound hunters. And while hound hunting lobbyists will hide underneath the banner of tradition, and that's how life is here in Vermont, that is patently untrue. Unlike in Southern states, hound hunting here in northern Vermont has never been all that popular and has really only gained momentum over the last couple of decades. And momentum might be a very strong term for it as well. There are only about 150 permits issued for bear hound hunting here in the state of Vermont for residents last year. So we're talking about an activity that's only interesting to a tiny, tiny fraction of folks in this area, but it does have an outsized impact for folks like me and some of my neighbors. And also another thing to clarify here, when I'm talking about hound hunting, I am specifically talking about using packs of dogs to chase animals like bear, raccoon, coyote, and bobcat, effectively cornering those animals often up a tree. I'm not talking about using a bloodhound to try to pick up the scent for a deer that you shot. I'm not talking about using dogs to flush and retrieve birds if you're going 
hunting for grouse or something like that. And also not to get it twisted, I'm also not against hunting either. And in fact, I think hunting is actually an important tool for managing certain types of animal populations. You know, the types of animals that have traditionally had some sort of predator, but we've since chased them off. You know, for example, white-tailed deer used to be preyed on by the wolves ever since we chased the wolves away a couple hundred years ago, their populations have exploded. And so hunting is necessary to keep their populations in check. But when it comes to things like bobcats and bears, they will naturally keep their populations in check, balancing with the landscape that they're in. The predator and prey, they, they can kind of form this cyclic interaction with each other. And yes, yeah, certain animals like the coyote are invasive animals who really historically weren't here, but really only have emerged as a new input into the ecosystem as a result of the fact that the wolves went away. And ironically, a lot of studies have shown that if you hunt coyotes, it's actually gonna make the remaining coyotes breed back stronger and in more numbers. So I personally see shooting coyotes as shooting yourself in the foot. And when it comes to folks like me who are poultry farmers who often have to worry about predators, I believe the two biggest impacts you can make are good farm security, like this fence and electric top wire, as well as using livestock guardian dogs as a method of non-lethal predator control. You know, in our farm's ecosystem, Toby Dog and Abby Dog play that role of apex predator, creating a bubble, keeping most of the other predators away from our direct farmland. Now, I know that's not how everybody wants to manage their farm, but that's how I want to manage my farm. And that gets to the fundamental reason why I want the hound hunters to stay the heck away from my land. And so there I found myself yesterday morning watching two hound hunters try to retrieve their dogs and prevent their dogs from coming onto my farm. And and while I never had seen those guys ever before, they clearly knew who I was. How you doing? And they even asked me not to post that video online. I so, uh, don't want my videos on YouTube and all that. But you don't have a choice. But when somebody shows up to your farm and is on a public road and you clearly visibly capture that interaction, they don't necessarily have control over what can or can't get posted. I checked with my attorney on that one. It's all good, man. And these weren't guys just randomly stopped on the side of the road. They drove back and forth and back and forth and back and forth several times before I decided to stop and investigate. Now, when Butch Spear was at my farm in the past, he told me that he can't control where his dogs go because his dogs are gonna follow the bear. You guys have permission to retrieve your dogs, but you're not, no hunting and then ask you never to return. All right, uh, and, and I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. But again, if we release my dogs six, seven miles from here and they end up and the bear runs this way. They're yeah. doing what they're taught to do. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. And they tree again, just like they did right now. Yeah. The so, only so, sense so that, that that's saying you have no control to respect my rights as a private property owner. Oh, I respect it. No, no, but you have no control over your dogs. That's my point. I just want to make sure I'm very clearly hearing your point. Your point is you can't control where your dogs go if they're tracking something. I can't control the bear. The dogs are taught to follow the bear. Right, but if you can't control the bear, then you can't control your dogs if the dogs are controlled by the bear. By state law, I am 100% in control of my dogs right now. But as I stood out there on the road with these two gentlemen, they told me that they knew that their dogs were in the cornfield across the way. They were standing right there in between my neighbor's land and my land to ensure that the dogs don't go on my land and that they had tone broken their dogs, meaning that they have a special tone that they can play on their dog's collar that they've trained to have that dog come to them when they hear the tone. The dogs, we can stop. All right, well, that's good. I want to see that. Which is quite honestly not all that different than how I've been training Abby Dog. And so I stood there and watched them as they were, you know, kind of furiously clicking the remote controls for their dog. And surprisingly, one of the dogs came out of the cornfield and showed up and they got him in the truck. That's, hey man, I'm impressed. I, I, I'll give you that for sure. Ah, man, you did a nice job. I give you guys props. And then a few minutes later, the other dogs followed suit. Well, have a good day, guys. 
and I will 100% confess that I was a little bit impressed. You know, folks had actually told me in the past that tone breaking was something you could do with your hound hunting dog, and that would be the way that they could respect private property. But I'd actually never seen it in action before. And so, yeah, there you go. These guys were actually able to keep true to their word. And even though it was a nuisance, and even though it was a distraction for me, they did not go on my farm. And so, yeah, I guess you learn something new every day. Hey, ducks, what are you three doing over here? Ducks came over here to visit the chickens. Now, I don't think this resolves everything and all the issues I have been having with hound hunters. Because later that day after the hound hunters were at the farm, I saw this posted on social media by Butch Spears' son. It's a weird take on an interaction. And then I also got a call later that day from my local game warden saying that those two hound hunters actually called Fish and Wildlife to report me for attempting to interfere with their hunt. So much for good vibes and finding mutual ground to stand on. Because at the end of the day, the way the hunting laws are still written and enforced here in Vermont, if those dogs had ended up here on our farm, those hunters would have been perfectly within their legal right to have them there. And so I do think that changes are still required to make something like having hounds show up on posted land illegal. But I will say I'm kind of grateful for the two gentlemen who showed up yesterday because what they did was they essentially proved to me that the idea that hounds can respect boundaries if their owners are managing them properly is true. Now, I continue to try to have conversations with Vermont Fish and Wildlife on these issues, but at this point, they just completely ignore me. But I'm totally serious about this one. I reached out to them over the summer to try to have some conversations, and at first they considered it, but when they asked me what questions I was gonna ask, they ultimately declined saying what I was doing was not education or news gathering. And while they have said in the past that they would ultimately answer my questions, I write to them every couple of weeks trying to make sure the email pops up to the top of their inbox and I get radio silence, which doesn't feel quite right to me because as a Vermont resident, landowner, and hunter, to be patently ignored by your fish and wildlife office, I don't know, just it seems like they're very focused on one set of constituents, and if somebody has a differing point of view, they just will ignore you. I never like to see people in power, particularly government power, ignore the voices of their constituents. And so this will be probably an issue I continue to push on, particularly as I get more time in the winter months. Do you guys look at the fog that's rolled in here so far? I started shooting this video about 20 minutes ago, and dang, I can't see a thing now. <laughs> I will say I'm pretty sure that Commissioner Eric, who's the commissioner of Vermont's Fish and Wildlife, just really doesn't want to talk to me because he's afraid I'm going to make things uncomfortable. What? Like the back of a Volkswagen? But that's still not a good excuse not to talk to me. Now, for those of you who clicked on this video hoping for an update on Butch Spear, and now I personally have not seen him since he pretended like he didn't see me when I saw him at the checkout line at the store a couple of months ago. He actually officially went missing earlier this summer. He went out into the woods with his dogs and his GPS stopped working and he went missing. Date to the search for the 69 year old man who was training his hunting dogs and never returned home. Investigators were looking for Ellsworth Spear from Newberry after he went out with his dogs around 430 on Thursday afternoon on Gore Road in Plainfield. Police and Fish and Game have been searching throughout the night and they say they found him today and he's safe. We'll have more coverage on this story starting at five o'clock. Now, thankfully, they did end up finding him the next day, but there was a good sizable chunk of time where nobody knew where he was and there was an active search going on for him. Now, Butch still goes hound hunting in the area, but I have not seen him directly in the area around my farm, even though he generally drives by my farm most mornings that he comes to hunt here in Peachum. You know, Butch has actually had a kind of eventful summer he, you know, got lost, like I said, but then also what happened was there was an incident also in the town over from me in Groton where this woman who lives on this like super, super remote dirt road, like in the middle of nowhere, she actually got into like an altercation with Butch and a couple of his hunting friends. Allegedly. Which to be 100% clear is never right. You should never be trying to interfere with a hunter that is actually illegal in the state of Vermont. But in the midst of her altercation. Allegedly. She ended up spraying him with with, uh, I think it was bear spray. Allegedly. Maybe it was pepper spray. Allegedly. Now this woman who was actually going through a manic episode at the time, and that's actually not speculation, that's actually something written out in the police reports on the incident. And so eventually she ended up getting arrested and there's like a court case that's sort of in the works in the various stages of court casing. But I will definitely say things remain very ugly here in Vermont when it comes to hound hunter landowner conflicts. And I see Vermont's Fish and Wildlife Commission is absolutely negligent because they're not
not really trying to do anything to help the situation. Because if I look at incidents like the one that happened yesterday, maybe that is how things need to ultimately get resolved, where hound hunters are actually respecting the property boundaries of residents who don't want them there. And in turn, those residents might cut those hound hunters just a little bit of slack. I hope you guys enjoyed this update. If you're new to this whole saga and you want to catch up, I'll leave a playlist up here where you can kind of see all of the issues that we faced on the hound hunting front over the last year or so. And I'll be back soon with another video. Thanks for watching, everybody.